Hello, YouTube. Today, we're going to look at some of the best tools to own for odd jobs, general construction stuff. Uh, this won't be a detailed video on like what to buy or uh, what you need for what job or any of that's like specific stuff, but more of just like a general overview of some of the tools that I've personally had a lot of experience with and uh, a lot of my coworkers use. So I've seen them um, the best of times and the worst of times. And uh, I'm just going to suggest some of the stuff that I know works. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably uh, are already familiar with like a, a, a good amount of these tools. You might even own some of them, but um, there might be some that you don't own or that you've never heard of uh that i might be able to fill you in on um so uh i think we should start off with the fun stuff uh we'll do power tools first um i know there's like a lot of videos outlining different brands of power tools and models and you know we can go down the rabbit hole of that uh but today we're just gonna like make some quick suggestions on what maybe a real world application for some of these tools is and what uh, I would recommend for uh, basically any level of uh, labor or construction worker. Um, so let's get it started with uh, Sawzalls. We're going to do a little screen share action here. Get rid of this. All right. So let's go to some of these power tools. Now, one of the best tools every person should have in their kit is a Sawzall. It's just kind of a... Uh, Oh shit, I need to make a whole tool. Um, works great for uh, <laughs> all the things you're not supposed to work, use it for. Uh, <laughs> so, um, as far as sawzalls go, uh, there's kind of two ways of thinking. Uh, if you want something that's going to cut through whatever the hell you put in front of it, you're going to want a quartered sawzall. You're going to burn through batteries really quick. It's going to be a hassle. Um, with a cordless trying to cut uh, a lot of steel if you're trying to pop through a bunch of screws stuff like that um, it can be really taxing on cordless sawzalls but that's kind of a, a whole nother category of, of more corded heavier duty tools that a, a lot of contractors use um, but for the everyday joe uh, as for as far as reciprocating saws goes um, I've had experience with all the major brands. Um, I will say that while any of these work, some of them really uh, stand out and shine on their own. One of those uh, that I'm a huge, huge fan of is the uh, Makita subcompacts. Um, they have a Sawzall that is a really small form factor. And uh, obviously this isn't going to compete with a full size um machines torque uh but it gets pretty damn close it's got a brushless motor it takes the 18 volt system the lxt batteries um and uh the bitch and thing about this sawzall is just its size man it is tiny uh i do a lot of work uh at height i do a lot of rigging and um this little sawzall man i mean i've put lanyards on this thing and hung it right off my harness while i climb up um it's nice and lightweight so you don't feel it banging into your legs when you're standing on perms up high or um, really whatever you need to do. This is just going to save a whole hell of a lot of space. So if you don't find yourself going for a Sawzall consistently, you know, just beating the snot out of a reciprocating saw or having the need for that, then I think this will fill that void and probably do what most people need it to do. Um, and at the price point it's at, it's pretty attractive. Uh when I got this, I got it in a package deal um, with an impact and a drill driver when the the uh, subcompact Makita line first came out. Uh, not going to lie, I was sold on having black power tools, man. Um, 
really, really did a lot more for uh, their marketing than uh, I think anybody expected. It was just offering a black tool. Um, but other than that, it's a respected, it's a respected name. Um, and Makita has pretty good customer service. And obviously if you buy through Home Depot, we all know how <laughs> lax they are on return policies, right? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, this, this, uh, this saws all right here will, uh, will kick ass for the majority of most people. And it, like I said, it is so small. It takes up so little room in your tool bag. Um, it's a really good move for almost anybody. And uh, obviously I'm a little biased. Uh, I'm a Makita guy. It's easy to keep uh, the batteries consistent across all of your tools if you stick to a brand. Um, not that that's a necessity, but uh, it, it sure helps to knock down the clutter a little bit and the cost. Um, but like I said, I got this in a package deal with the impact driver and the drill. And the Sawzall has served me well. I have really smoked the hell out of that thing trying to cut rebar and just all kinds of silly stuff that you would never really expect that sawzall to uh to punch through and it does uh, put a good diablo blade on that thing and it'll it'll do most of what any full-size machine would do um but that kind of leads me to a nice little segue actually um because the subcompact lineup of makita tools are really impressive for the weight and size uh they're they're not gonna um they're not gonna be that big boat anchor on your hip that uh you know our old dewalt's or our old uh milwaukee drivers you know these big heavy multi-pound tools these these things come in pretty light and pretty small um and still pack a pretty solid punch um a good example of that would be the impact the impact driver uh the quarter inch impact driver for uh makita subcompact line is kind of a powerhouse man i really didn't notice a whole lot of difference switching over from the full-size makita drivers to the sum the subcompact makita drivers they seem to carry over very 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 similar torque um they don't seem to overheat faster or anything anything like that i haven't noticed anything spooky with the smaller frame um, but they're, they're tanks, man. They, uh, they'll run six inch deck, deck screws, uh, all day long. I mean, obviously like any other gun, they'll get tired, but I was really impressed with just how much you could get done with one of these and, uh, and not really notice it hanging off your belt. Um, obviously the pricing on them is, is killer for Makita tools. And, um, once again, I think that would be why that's a, that's a pretty big, good starting point for any uh, anybody looking to get a little toolkit together i would say these makita subcompacts do not sleep on a man they are good tools they are affordable and when they break they replace them uh and that's really cool i have seen full disclosure i have seen the quarter inch impact break um i wouldn't say that was under normal use <laughs> uh it fell out of a scissor lift um and uh just totally uh grenaded itself it was only from about eight feet um but it landed on an extended bit in a really awkward angle and, and kind of grenaded the whole chuck assembly and everything on it um but like i said the return process was swift and easy with home depot and we had a new tool on stage in a matter of hours um but other than that one instance i have not seen any major mechanical issues with these there are some cosmetic issues I could point out though. Um, so if we click on this guy, let's see if we can get a picture of just the, uh, just the impact. Okay. Doesn't want to give me a rear view, but if you look at the impact driver, uh, there's this rubberized coating that's on a lot of impacts and power tools nowadays to just add a little bit of fall protection and um and some some scratch protection but the uh the rubber over mold on the body of the subcompact makita cordless driver uh has a, a heat seam like a heat weld like where they would meld the two pieces of rubber the two halves over the actual housing and i have seen that seam right there toward the back of the uh right toward the back of the gun split open and it 
it gets a little annoying having these two little <laughs> flapping wings hanging off your gun. Um, but it took a, it took about six months for that to happen. But once it happens, I mean, there's no <laughs> attaching them. I've tried barge cement and all kinds of different glue and it just seems to, everything just seems to pull up off of that plastic. So short of etching it and epoxying the thing onto, onto the etched plastic, which just isn't worth the time to me. Um, that's about the only uh, the only issue I've noticed with with that product. But other than that, super lightweight, super affordable, super reliable, super powerful, and very 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 convenient. Um, you know what more could you ask for, right? Moving on from there, I I think you know what always comes up after impacts is well what what do you put on them? You know because the the quarter inch impact is probably the most versatile um used overused and over abused tool uh in my industry and i'm sure in a lot of others um but i mean we use these from everything from driving screws to uh you know cracking uh half inch bolts which i would not recommend using a quarter inch impact for cracking you know larger diameter hardware or impacting large diameter hardware on um they just you know that that shank is pretty thin and, and you're, you're going to end up snapping bit drivers and stuff like that um and probably straining the hell out of the tool but nonetheless they will do it and we do it all the time um but i would like to uh to kind of just maybe cruise around and see what we're looking at as far as um some of the uh available uh available uh attachments for a quarter inch impact that you're going to want um, I would say, obviously, number one, you're going to want a good bit set. Um, let's see what Home Depot is working with here. When it comes to brands, um, things ebb and flow. Uh, but one thing has always been consistent. Ryobi has great deals on usable products, but when it comes to bits, I wouldn't touch them with a 10 foot pole. I have gone through boxes of Ryobi bits and just <laughs> can't seem to get them to last more than a day on almost anything. Um, I've also noticed like the actual precision of the grind on like, say like the Robins, like the square drive um, Canadian bits <laughs> are just literally the wrong size <laughs> they're just they seem to not be machined very accurately and that can lead to some uh really frustrating days when you say oh i got that bit and uh your chinese bit just doesn't seem to hack it um i've had good experience with milwaukee bits this is a really cool looking little kit because it comes with yeah it comes with a three eighths uh adapter which would be great for all your sockets if you're doing any uh any small nuts or bolts um comes with a couple bit drivers and some extended torques an extended big flat head um a lot of nice extended bits on this a couple of impact drill bits which is cool and a little magnetic uh a little magnetic uh chuck um something like this would get get you uh get you going but I would recommend having just a universal kit of some sort like this doesn't need to be this one. Obviously we're just kind of cruising around looking at random stuff. Um, but I would stick to the more noteworthy quality brands like Milwaukee, um, DeWalt works. I kind of bag them up with Ryobi as far as the bit game goes. Makita once again, seems to do really, really well with their bits. Um, specifically just their Phillips head bits. I'm, I'm forgetting at the moment exactly what those were called. Um, what the, uh, you know, the actual uh, product line is called on those, but um, they've been, they've been really, really, really good bits. Those um, I think there was another brand that uh, I kept stealing off of my buddy because I kept blowing up bits. Uh, I want to say it was Norsk or no Norsky something like that um those were really 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 good phillips bits too um but you'll 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 kind of notice that you know there's going to be a specific bit that most people trust and 
at the moment that seems to be those Makita bits. Um, I will say that uh, they get a little pricey uh, when you start, you know, working your way through these uh, these bits. You'd be shocked at how fast this can uh, this can add up because. Like I said, if you're if you're driving six inch deck deck screws all day, or you're um, you know, trying to take screws beyond flush regularly, like I'm doing, so that plasters can go over stuff, um, then you're probably gonna snap a couple bits here and there. These Makitas, these gold impact drivers, these are what I have a lot of experience with. I know there's a new line out that's silver that a lot of people like, but these old gold bits, man. I mean, there there's such a such a precision grind on them that with my little 18 volt impact, I could run a screw in, take my hand off the gun, and the gun would just hang there on the Phillips bit. I mean, that's how good of a of a purchase those things have on all flats. Um, so really, really, really good bits for the money. I would go with these guys. Um, so you get your set a, a good uh you know arsenal of Phillips bits going because that's obviously what you're going to use the majority of the time. Um, but at this other stuff, these bit drivers, these drill bits, I mean, you could go to the moon with, uh, just being decked out in every imaginable combination of stuff you could throw on your impact. And it can make, can make an impact, uh, kind of a, a one, a one tool army, if you know what I mean. Um, now, like I was saying earlier, when it gets to some of the bigger diameter hardware, um, your quarter inch impact isn't going to really cut it. You're probably going to want to upgrade to a three eighths inch impact. Like a lot of technicians and mechanics use, uh, back when I was doing car work. Um, obviously we loved the, the snap on drivers. Those are pricey. Um, and I think probably pretty unnecessary for most people, but any of these brands that has a quarter inch impact is definitely going to have a three eighths in inch impact driver. And that's going to be, essentially the same product maybe with uh some different specifications but it's going to be a very similar product that's going to function similar um as far as uh as those three eights drivers goes i'm, I'm not going to give any uh recommendations because in the past five six seven years i haven't had to use them too much uh i've used some half inch drivers um but the three eighths inch driver, we just kind of skip right over and would rather abuse our quarter inch impacts uh, and save ourselves that one tool purchase. <laughs> um, but like was in that one kit, um, I would definitely make sure that one of the first things that you get is a three eighths step up adapter so that you can run a traditional set of sockets. Um, now we haven't touched the, uh, the circular saw skill saw kind of world yet that's um there's a lot of minutia you can get lost in with uh blade size and 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 you know power capacity corded versus cordless you know skill saws um i haven't had any really bad experiences with any of the major brands of skill saw um cordless that is uh the uh Circular saws like from like say the Makita sub impact line are surprisingly torquey and get a lot done. You're obviously not going to want to rip, you know, inch and an eighth or inch and a quarter sheets with it. Um, but if it, if it needs to get done, it it will get done as long as you let the tool get the cutting and you don't force it along. I do know that now uh, a lot of these brands are starting to come up with these different fuel systems now where they're getting a dual battery or they're moving up to a 40 volt or a 60 volt or even dual 40 volts. Um, now you're starting to get into some really uh, something that really kind of makes the corded options more obsolete um, just because these are more modern and they're a little more efficient, definitely a lot less uh, cumbersome on the job site. Um, but as you know, you start getting into this newer, fancier stuff, you're going to start getting into some big, big dollar signs. Uh, I think if we were to look at some of those bigger saws, we'd probably be pretty, pretty shocked at what those are going for now. So here we go. Here's just your basic average seven and a quarter 
Makita circular saw. I have experience with the saw. It's a great saw. For the price, it's a great kit. Um, looks like you're getting two. Yeah, you're getting two of the five amp hour batteries, which are the bigger Makita batteries. Um, that right there alone has got to be 150 bucks of, of uh, the price of this thing. And you get a dual charger, which is awesome. Um, now, this is a dual battery system. Uh, so I'm sure you're going to get pretty good run times and serious power out of this really good torque. Um, but to, man, 249 for a dual battery saw, that's surprisingly good. Actually, I wasn't expecting, uh, I wasn't expecting those to be so affordable. Um, Milwaukee has some great stuff. DeWalt has some great stuff. Like I said, you can look up plenty of videos of people going back and forth as to like what brand is best, uh, you know, head to head showdowns and whatnot. And every year these guys, these tool reviewers do it. And, um, you know, power to them, man. That's a, that's a, that's a long process, you know, to actually, you know, cut your way through the weeds on these products and, you know, weigh out the pros and cons of them. Um, but I would say that, uh, you're pretty safe with the main brands of circular saws. Um, just figure out what blade size, like depth of cut you're going to need, and then figure out, you know, what kind of run times you're going to need. If you're doing long cuts through thick material, maybe look at one of those dual battery systems. They're, they're about twice as much, but you're getting about twice the capability, which is really, really cool. If you're the kind of guy that needs that. Um, those saws, uh, are impressive and we'll just leave it at that <laughs> one other thing um in the power tool world that's got me kind of uh jazzed is these multi-tools they're kind of all the rage now i'm sure i'm sure you guys have seen them um but it would be really 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 cool to kind of just do a little run through and see see what Home Depot's offering in that realm in the uh oscillating tool uh realm. Um obviously there's that DeWald one right there. I'm trying to see if I can get into uh uh the category for them. Here we go. So let's see, let's see. We have DeWalt, the Atomic 20 Volt Max Cordless Brushless Oscillating Multi-Tool for 149 with no battery, no charger. Um, I have used this. Uh, this is a really good tool. Um, all these multi-tools are pretty similar. I think what you're what you're looking at between the brands is uh is the the actual tool head interchangeability like the interface for that and how easy that is or how secure that is to use um the dewalt one's great because if you can see right up on the front right here that's your your tool that you have attached because this takes multiple different tool heads um but this little black lever that my cursor is hovering over that we're zooming in on you just reach forward with your index finger and pull on that and the bit comes free really easy quick hot swap system so if you're going from uh you know cutting a cutting a square hole out of a piece of drywall and then you want to uh you want to get a a rounded cutoff end on there some switch it for whatever reason it's a one second process and you're back on the tool um i really like the design of the dewalt i think it's a really really good tool i'm looking to get an oscillating multi tool but like i said I'm kind of a Makita guy. So I've been watching a lot of reviews myself and uh, trying to decide if the new Makita oscillating multi-tool is worth uh, worth uh, going for just to keep the consistency or if I should go for a new brand with different batteries just to get the best possible multi-tool. But if you look at this, this doesn't have as quick of a change system. On the front, it looks like there's a little throw lever. Um, I'm sure that works great, uh, but it's just not quite as quick. Um, 
but it looks like it comes with a, a different benefit here because you have a much smaller head on the tool because you don't have that big locking ring and lever. Um, and that should allow you to get this tool head into some much tighter spots. Like uh, if you're trying to cut off, you know, in inside of a door jam or you're trying to reach in between, you know, uh, a studded wall and you're trying to get in between the two sheets of, uh, of, of drywall and cut something in there. This tool head's nice and, 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 and small, and it should fit into some really compact areas, which would be really advantageous. Cause usually when you're using a multi-tool like this, it's because you don't have the perfect tool for the job <laughs> and you're looking to just kind of fudge it real quick and wing it. Um, that's what these seem to work really great for me. I'm sure there's dudes that use these for like precision specific things. But in my industry, this is, hey, man, you got to punch a hole and you don't want to use a hole saw or you don't have a hole saw. This is great. Uh, you want to just make a quick cut on a piece of small, thin material. This is great. Um, anything of that sort. It's a really, really, really good, good tool to have, especially when you're considering these things are in the hundred, hundred to hundred and fifty dollar range. And you most likely already have batteries, um, especially if you're buying a Sawzall, a circular saw, an impact, you're most likely going to already have a certain brand of batteries. And chances are, if you stick with like the big three or four brands, I'm sure all those tools are going to work just fine for you. And they seem to have complete interchangeability with the tool heads. So look, man, it's a big, it's a big vibrating cutty thing. It's basically all it is um but man did they get the uh did they get the uh title right when they called these multi-tools because they really are they really are multi-tools um but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna have to do a little more homework on these maybe in a, at a later date we'll we'll do a, a deep dive on multi-tools would you look at that it's a little subcompact one Ooh, God, that color scheme just does so much for me. And I know, I know you guys are going to laugh me off the internet for that, but go ahead and like, and comment if, uh, <laughs> if you guys like buying tools just cause they look cool too. Um, maybe I won't feel like such a weirdo. I would say as far as the power tool thing goes though, like I said, I don't want to get too into the weeds. Um, there's plenty of places to go if you want to do reviews, comparisons, all that kind of stuff. Today, we're just going to kind of brush over what I think are the basics of power tools that you need. And those are basically the four I would say every man should have, um, regardless of what you do for a living. If you're an IT guy, having these in the garage will help you at some point. This will help you in so many ways I can't even begin to count. Uh, but power tools are expensive. They're cumbersome. They're, uh, you know, there's a barrier to entry with them. Nothing beats hand tools. And if you can learn how to do most jobs with hand tools, you are, uh, you're going to be a very capable person. <laughs> um, with not a lot at your disposal, you can get a lot done. If you know what hand tools you need, how to use them, which ones to uh, put priority on. Uh, a lot of people buy a lot of tools they don't need, or they buy tools based on, you know, one specific job they might be doing. Um, and then you end up with this tool that's uh, in the arsenal that you don't really know how to use and you don't really have any use for. So I would say we should probably look at a couple of tools that every man, every woman, every child over the age of 10 should own one of these just to be a efficient human being and to not need to pay people to do everything for you. Where I would say one of the uh, pinnacles of this, obviously, is a hammer. And me personally would say a framing hammer is the way to go for most people. Um, the framing hammer is typically going to have a waffled face. Um, that's going to really help you keep a grip on whatever you're hammering, which would most likely be, you know, nails. <laughs> uh, you so you're going to be looking at 
you know, if you're, if you're whacking a, an eight penny nail and you don't want to slide off that waffling, those little teeth on the face of the hammer, which I'm sure we can see in one of these pictures, um, is really going to help you stick to that nail. And so that you don't you, the head doesn't keep slipping off on you. You don't whack your hand or whack something you don't want to walk or whack. Um, but the, the, the waffling on those hammers, um, does wear out eventually. There are places you can go to get them recut. There's even hammers that come with removable heads. So you can buy a fresh head and throw it on. Um, but a hammer is a hammer is a hammer. Um, there are some that are better than others, but they are all hammers, uh, especially when it comes to the framing variety of hammers. They're all very, very similar. Me personally, um, I have a couple of uh, recommendations. I have a couple preferences when it comes to hammers. This being one of them, the Vaughn 19 ounce hammer is a great starting hammer. This is the hammer I started out with. Um, I think that this should be everyone's first hammer. Uh, until you really understand why you would want a better hammer, until you could um, appreciate the better features on a better hammer, you're not going to notice because you won't know yet. <laughs> so I would say get used to running one of these axe handle Vons. Uh, these things are just ass kicker, tough hammers for the money. You cannot beat them. I still know a lot of professionals that trust a Vaughn every day and they probably will never change brands because for $24, they have a hammer that lasts, lasts a lifetime. Um, but you can obviously get into some fancier stuff. Uh, all these kind of cheesy Home Depot brands, and I'm not trying to to badmouth anyone who's using these tools because I own I own Husky tools. You know, I own some of these you know HDX brand like cheaper tools. I own some of this stuff, but when it comes to your framing hammer, there's no reason to buy one of those brands when a Vaughn is twenty four dollars and is a great hammer. Um, for me personally. I have tons of experience with the Vaughn. I have tons of experience with the deluxe California framing hammer from Estwing. Um, I prefer a steel handled hammer. I prefer having that steel shank. A lot of people don't like that because they can't choke up as comfortably on the hammer. I don't seem to have that issue. Um, but what I like mine for is I can put a lot of trust in the actual tang of that hammer, the handle of that hammer. Um, I can use that hammer as a pry bar essentially, and just really use and abuse it and not have to worry about potentially snapping the wood handle or the hickory handle on my, uh, my hammer, which if you've ever had happen to you is not very fun at all. Um, I don't think they're going to have it on here, but let's see. There it is. Now, this is the exact hammer I run. So this is a 19 ounce hammer. So the same weight as the Vaughn. Um, it's going to feel heavier than the Vaughn. I can tell you that much because the weight uh, seems to continue down the handle with all that steel. Um, so this is a man's hammer. It carries some serious weight behind it, but it's not um, it's not any more cumbersome really than any of the other hammers. And like I said, this thing will just take a beating it will be the best pry bar you've ever you've ever owned um everything from just setting the height on a door to just lifting up a a, a piece of plywood out of the stack because it's vacuumed down this thing is going to work great for you and you'll be able to trust it i've run them over with forklifts i've run them over with scissor lifts don't ask me why or how i have and uh i haven't had any any deflection that didn't bounce right back so I would say for $50, this truly is a one and done purchase. And uh, it also looks bitchin' to boot. This is one of the only hammers I found that has that old school aesthetic while still being a really damn good tool. Um, and then there is a, uh, there is another brand of hammer that I would recommend. And like I said, Unless you are somebody who's experienced in your trade and you know 
you're going to be going to your framing hammer more than most of your tools. Like in my trade, we're going to the hammer, you know, more than the majority of our other tools almost all the time. And that kind of leads us to maybe prioritize the quality of our hammer. So this brand, Stiletto, these guys have made one of the best framing hammers in the industry for quite some time now. They make titanium headed hammers. Um, they're much lighter. See this guy, for instance, it's a 14 ounce hammer. So you're looking at already right out of the gate of five ounce savings. And it has a composite handle that is very, very strong. I've yet to see one of those break. Um, it seems to have a little shorter of a claw. Um, that can be an advantage or a disadvantage, depending on if you're looking for leverage or you're looking for just compact, a compact head that you can fit into an area. So you'll have to weigh that out on your own. But as you can see with the stilettos, the simple stiletto, the uh, titanium just milled face framing hammer is $145.99. That is a far cry from a $25 Vaughn for a tool that does the same thing. But if you take a look at this, this is a very, very, very high quality piece of equipment. Um, the reason I don't own a stiletto is just simply because you are asking for somebody to walk off the job site with that hammer. In my opinion, it is universally recognized as a $200 hammer. People really have a knack for getting sticky fingers when they find expensive tools and uh, I don't like being the guy yelling about who stole my tool on stage, especially not when you find it at the bottom of your bag five minutes later and have to tell everybody you're an idiot. Um, but I digress. They also make this. I, I have a coworker who used this for a very long time. Um, I had a chance to spend some days with this hammer and this hammer is a powerhouse. Absolute monster, interchangeable heads like we were talking about earlier. So once that milling gets worn out, you literally just buy a new head and screw it right on. Don't quote me on this, but I'm also pretty sure you can get different types of heads and you might be able to get a finishing hammer face. So that way, if you needed to drive just little pin nails or something into cabinetry or baseboards, you won't be denting that waffle checkered pattern into whatever you're swinging at if you you know, end up putting a little too much juice on it. Um, but as far as hammers go, this, this is pretty much the cream of the crop as far as with what I'm experienced with. And I would say if you got the money and you're the kind of guy who takes a shine to really fancy, shiny things, go for it, man. You will not be disappointed with the stiletto hammer by any means. Now, when you, when you're talking about the hammers, you're talking about the hand tools, like I said, there's a, there's a few tools that just kind of everybody should have. And the framing hammer, the next tool, I mean, this goes hand in hand with it for me. I really think is a cat's paw or a cat's claw or uh, whatever jargon you've heard it called. But I personally have this 10 inch S wing right here. This is nothing fancy. I have a lot of cat's paws. We'll just say that. I have a lot of cat's paws. But the one I carry every day is this S-Wing. I like the uh, the soft rubber grip on it. It really helps to soak up the vibration when you're swinging that 19-ounce hammer at the, at the back of this thing. Um, it really soaks up a lot of that vibration. And it gives you a good, soft place to grip where you're not going to end up with your fingertips ringing at the end of the day. Um, the downside to that soft grip is say you use this end right here, this little uh, pry bar end and not the actual paw end. If you drive that thing too deep to where you get into that, that silicone rubbery grip thing, that is not a very stout grip and it will tear. Um, I've had a few of these where the grips tear and I end up just electrical taping them or gaff taping them back on and running them again until that gets pushed up or ripped and it's unusable. Um, once that thing is smoked, you still have a perfectly usable 
cat's paw and none of that iron's ever going bad. So I would say at under 20 bucks, this would make you a very, very capable person. This is great for pulling things like uh, beyond flush nails um, or getting under the heads of screws that are spinning because they've been driven all the way down to the shank and there might be no teeth to get you back out. That little cat's paw head, you fish that under the, the head of the screw and run your impact at the same time and you'll catch that thread and it'll pull that, that screw right out. Um, also, just minor adjustment work. If you just need to tweak, if you, like I was saying earlier with the hammer, if you needed to lift a door because you're trying to hang a door or you're just trying to get the perfect height before you, you shoot your pony wall in or something like that, this thing is an absolute lifesaver. It replaces for the most part, wedges. And a lot of the times replaces a bigger pry bar, which is a harder thing to carry than this little cat's paw. So I won't go on about it for too long, but I really am a huge fan of this cat's paw. There is one other one that I am um, going to recommend. And it's actually this DeWalt right here. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the actual cat's paw as far as this DeWalt one goes, but I will say this little counter sunk digger, whatever you want to call it, um, is an absolutely incredible addition to a cat's paw, man. Cause the amount of times I've had to pull, you know, a 16 nail out of a, out of flooring where it was sunk deep. And I couldn't get to it no matter what I did. And I didn't want to just chew a hole into the, into the floor to get that nail out. What you do is you take that circle, you lay it right over the head of your nail, wherever it is. And then you whack the side of that pry bar, whack, whack, whack. And it'll carve out all the wood around that head of that nail. Now, when you pull your cat's paw out, there's going to be a nice chamfered hole sitting around the head of that nail, letting you get your claw in and rip it right out. Um, the experience I had with this thing was tearing up plywood flooring, a whole stage worth of plywood flooring, which was a very long job. And all those nail, those raw nails, not screws. And that was a real problem, um, because it's just time consuming. So we ended up getting into a little bit of a, a assembly line system where I was using these, this end of the pry bar to just basically carve out the workspace around each one of those nails. And then people behind me were following up and pulling all of them. And we got that job done much faster because of this tool. The alloy that they use for it is weak. And if you don't line it up so that it's just touching wood, if that thing strikes the head of the nail, it will start getting chewed up and become unusable eventually. So just make sure you got good aim. That's basically all I can say about that. But man, you're the amount of times I've been so what I would have been SOL if I didn't have a cat's paw. I can't begin to tell you. So let's keep rolling with hand tools, huh? Let's go to let's go to C wrenches. So when it comes to sea wrenches, I own dozens of different sea wrenches in different sizes, different brands, different alloys, um, different jaws. I will say a sea wrench is a sea wrench is a sea wrench, but having a bad sea wrench can really, really make things difficult. Um, it can actually make the sea wrench pretty much useless. If you have too much play, in the actual jaw or the worm gear of your sea wrench every time you snug it up onto something if there's any type of vibration before you pull any type of movement it's just going to back off a hair and that might be just enough to round off whatever piece of hardware you're putting it on uh even wing nuts i've had them back off that bad where they roll off a wing nut um if you're not paying attention and keeping that worm gear tight but as far as the brands go, um, good old Crescent has never failed me. I'm sure people have varying opinions on this, but the Crescent brand wrenches are really, really good. Uh, they 
seem to, I mean, I seem to want to use the eight and 10 inch the most. Those seem to be the most usable size of crescent wrench for me. Um, obviously having a, a nice smaller one to get into some smaller areas is a good idea too. Something like this Milwaukee twin pack would be really good. And I have used these and I will say the Milwaukee probably has one of the tightest tolerances on its worm gear of the sea wrenches I've used in the past few years. Um, the price is great on them too. And I love how they have that like laser etched or, you know, engraved uh, the measurements on them, which is kind of cool. It's always neat to have, have, you know, neat little writing and decals and suave, cool shit on your tools. Um, but I'm a big fan of these Milwaukee ones. I would say those are a go at, what is it? $31 for the pair. That'll get you going, man. Not too much to, uh, to dig into with this, but there's also, a variant here it is <laughs> i have a couple of these not this exact one but they're kind of like a combination between a sea wrench and a pair of vice grips and they're badass uh, these things work so you snug it down to whatever size you are trying to mess with and uh you know you you clip it just like a vice grip and now what we were talking about earlier with that worm gear having play is no longer an issue those jaws are a tight bite onto whatever you're on and they're not going to slip. I would say that this is probably not something I keep in my bag. Uh, they're pretty heavy and pretty, pretty bulky. And there's not many times where you're going to need this over a normal C wrench, but it is a cool variation. And uh, when I saw them on the shelf, I sure as hell bought one. So you should too. <laughs> uh, obviously it's not actually a necessity, but Hey man, can never have too many tools you know um all right what else do we got here let's look at let's look at torpedoes or levels uh a torpedo level a torpedo level is a a really good quick measuring tool. Um, this is probably going to be sufficient for most of your quick down and dirty jobs. Obviously, if you're going over a long piece of material or something that has deflection or potential for deflection, I would uh, go with a longer level, something that's going to give you a nice flat surface to gauge against to see if you're running out anywhere. But uh, the torpedo levels are something that everyone should have in their bag. Um, it's just a super, super, super useful thing, especially for finding angles even. Um, it's just a really good, useful tool. Um, Empire uh, has always been kind of a go-to for me. Um, I, I, I seem to just like the quality that they seem to come with. Nice machining, nice laser engraving, all that. Um, my dad always used empires and I'm sure that gave me a little bias. Uh, but man, are they, are they great tools and are they necessary? Some of them are really cool too. They have this little V on top, like this one does. That'll help you rest that on a, on a pipe or any type of round or squared off, um, piece of material where you're trying to set this on, not such a flat edge. The other side will have a magnet. And that'll be helpful for that, that same scenario. Um, but yeah, good, good torpedo level. That's, that's a, uh, that's a must. Um, I will say some of the cheap torpedo levels do just fine. Um, I, I think I have one of those Husky ones, the Husky brand levels. And it's, it's nothing special, but, um, it's, you know, it's worked relatively well for me and I, I don't have any major complaints with it. Um, not one of those tools that you need to get uh, super expensive with at all. Just like this next one. So utility knives, carpet knives, box cutters, whatever you want to call them. The Milwaukee brand utility knives are 
kind of becoming my new favorite. Um, the blade storage doesn't come open like it seems to do on my Huskies or, you know, some of the other brand ones that I had or the tools, the actual blade storage that you see right here would get wallered out because you use it so much. Those detents get worn out eventually and you start having issues where your little, uh, your little utility knife is dumping five razor blades out into your tool bag. Or when you set it down in the lift and it gets shaken around, razor blades are falling out of the thing. I am not a fan of pulling razor blades out of my uh, ass cheeks or tool bags or out of my fingers. That's just not something I'm interested in doing. Um, so I'm a really big fan of the, how, how tight the blade storage is on these. Um, there's not a whole lot of play in the actual blade. And sometimes that's a problem with these fold out, uh, utility knives is you're not going to have quite as rigid of a tool as the old school, just slide the blade forward type. Um, but Milwaukee has come a long way with these, these fast back ones, and they have a lifetime warranty, which is awesome. Now you see it has that little gut hook uh, thing that they're referencing right here. That's because when you fold this up and it's collapsed, that blade is poking through the handle, not enough to, to where you're going to cut yourself on it, but very similar to like one of those everyday carry pocket knives that has a seatbelt cutter. This is exactly that. This is a seatbelt cutter, essentially. Um, I've used that, that gut hook on a number of uh, different materials from like visqueen to canvas. And it's actually made for a really nice guide. Um, so if you can get to, if you don't need to punch a hole through the center of the material, but you get to start on the end of the material, run that gut hook. If it doesn't need to be a very specific cut where you're watching your blade, run the gut hook. You're taking away any chance of poking through into somebody else. You're also taking away any chance of you drastically sliding out of control because it's kind of bound up in that plastic um great great little tools for the money uh once again not super important there is a number of different companies that sell a razor holding device of some kind and you need one of them i'm just gonna Go ahead and say it, man. A uh, cutting tool is uh, probably one of the most used tools. That's why if you go out into the woods with one thing, it should be a knife. Um, I would say that these, uh, any brand of these are great, but stay away from the cheap folding ones. If you're going to get cheap ones, get cheap, solid ones like this Stanley. Um, even those will start rattling apart on you. You need to tighten up the little Phillips screw that holds it together, but at least they're not dangerous, like these folding husky lockback utility knives. Do not buy these. Do not buy these. These are dangerous tools. The issue being with these is the way that the blade locks in. Uh, it's a thin, thin piece of alloy on top. That's the safety lever for it. These things are going to take a beating, man. They're going to get smashed and, and, and bashed. That safety lever gets loose. Those blades start falling out left and right. And that's a not only annoying and not only um, dangerous, you know, but it's also like concerning because you might damage a piece of material that's expensive <laughs> or uh, or mess up a cut that you only have one chance at. So I would say just do yourself a favor, steer clear of the junk, um, grab something that's just going to work for you. Uh, as far as those blades go, Good old cheap Stanleys, man. Uh, you buy the big pack that screws right onto uh, your workbench, and it's it's got a dispenser built in. They're killer. Just go with old Stanley blades. I'm sure there's a better brand out there, but that's what I've been buying my whole life, and they've always worked for me. So I'm not going to plug anybody else. So let's see. Obviously, tape measures, right? Is that where we're heading next? I think so. The tapes, um, kind of similar to the utility knives. Go with a good brand, go with a, a decent design, and it probably won't go wrong on you. Uh, the only issues I seem to ever have with tape measures is the clips on the end of them going bad. Now, this is a promotional tape this is not an actual tool tape 
um, it's a China garbage one that I use in the office for garbage. But this little tab, these rivets get worn out eventually on these cheaper tape measures. That's one of the only problems I'll end up having. Um, the other thing is the locks will get stuck or stop working. Um, the worst case scenario, and I, I've got to say, this has happened to me. <laughs> this has been the death of 80% of my tape measures. I buy a new tape measure every couple of months because they just get destroyed at my work. Um, but the one problem I run into is at the very end of the tape. When you get all the way down to the bottom, uh, whatever holds it to the spindle or whatever holds it to that spring lets loose. And all of a sudden, your tape you'll notice that your tape's not going in smoothly anymore. Your tape's not retracting on its own smoothly anymore. Um, that means you should scrap it and go get another tape because what's going to happen next is you're going to go to pull that and the whole tape's just going to jettison right out of the actual box. Um, and you're going to end up with a big, long, sharp ribbon and an empty piece of shit plastic unit that's worthless to you. Um, I don't know how preventable this is uh, just because people have different abuse levels on their tools and we misuse a lot of tools in my industry. So that's probably why that happens. Um, but obviously the Stanley Fat Max has been a big name in tape measures for a long time. I trust them. I would lay my money down for them. They're really, really, really good about the return policy on them. Um, but something I have noticed, and obviously Milwaukee's kind of killing the game, coming out with a lot of good stuff. But surprisingly, it's not from Milwaukee. It's the Lufkin tape that I've been looking at. I saw a guy with one of these uh, on a job site not that long ago, and it was um, really interesting to me because it seemed to it seemed to like kind of fill a lot of the gaps that we've always wanted with to be filled with tape measures. Um, so I'm going to see if I can find that real quick. Let's see. I don't think they're stocking it. Let's check. Uh, let's check Amazon. I'm an idiot. Sorry, it's Crescent. I was misspeaking. Crescent brand, <laughs> Lufkin. So this is what uh, a kid on a job site had just recently that I saw and I fell in love with. It looks durable. Obviously, I don't have any long term experience with this, but. It looks to be a very similar design to like the Fat Max or the Milwaukee. I don't think you're going to have a problem with the case exploding on you or anything like that. The end hook is nice because it has the the 360 degree end hook where you can kind of not be that accurate or really be stretching your tape out far and still just manage to hook something and get your measurement. That's nice. It also has a finger break on the bottom, which is really cool so that you can, uh, without having to use the lock, stop the retraction of the tape. But the coolest part about these hands down has got to be their luminescent tape. It's got these really, really, really big numbers on it. Um, makes it super easy for you to read. Uh, but it also glows in the dark just a little bit. So depending on what kind of work you do, that might be a, a must, honestly. A lot of the time when I'm working, we shut all the house lights off because somebody might be recording while I'm trying to work quietly. Um, having this glow in the dark tape measure would have been such a lifesaver. And I think, you know what? I think I'm adding it to my cart right now because it's that much of a must. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would recommend that Lufkin. Um, I don't see where you could go wrong. Tapes don't usually last a lifetime. So if you don't like it, you'll have a chance to replace it, I promise. Um, but yeah, it's a cool... That's a cool product, man. I have not seen anybody else go the route of glow in the dark tape measures yet. So good on them for that. Um, speaking of measurements, this is another uh, 
this is another great measuring tool that maybe not uh, may, may, maybe it's not as common as uh, obviously a tape measure or some of these other like must have tools but i think it deserves to be in the category of must have tools based solely on the fact that uh i use this thing more often than a tape measure depending on what i'm doing um so they're called uh, laser distometers. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Disto is what we call them. Uh, but I know that there is one from Bosch that is pretty freaking good for the money. And it takes quite a bit of abuse as well. This is your guy right here. So this thing has a great screen on it. I can read it in broad daylight. Um, I when I'm working outside, direct sunlight on that thing, you can still read the numbers. And the laser is pretty damn bright too. So you can really see the laser in broad daylight, which tends to be the problem with these. If you're trying to shoot a measurement from one exterior wall to another exterior wall, you might get washed out in that white stucco and your laser might not show up. This thing shows up. Um, also at $80, it's, it's a really affordable tool for how much usability you get out of this. So the, the standoff is pre-programmed into it. So it knows it, the height of the actual tool. So you don't need to account for that, obviously. But if you put the butt of this tool up against whatever surface you're starting your measurement from and shoot to whatever distance you're trying to shoot to or whatever surface you're trying to shoot to, it will give you pretty much down to a quarter inch. They say within a 16th of an inch. I'm going to say within a quarter inch um, because there's so many variables as to like what the angle you're measuring to is, what material it is, how reflective it is, all that kind of gets into it. If it's dirty, covered in dust. So let's say probably within a quarter inch, this thing is accurate as long as you're taking your measurement correctly. Um, that is insanely useful when you consider the biggest tape anyone's carrying on them really is a 35 foot, Right. This does 165 feet. So instead of me having to go get my 100 foot tape or my 300 foot tape, we all know how inconvenient those are. These big old spools that nobody even wants to take to the job site because they're a nightmare and they take up so much space. This replaces all of that. Obviously not up to 300 feet and not to the same degree of accuracy or reliability. But for most of the stuff people are doing, they're just looking for a quick reference measurement. They'll get a more specific measurement down the road or they'll have it surveyed or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. This thing is such an efficient, quick little tool. It's like it's like the iPhone of tape measures, man. It's just the it's the jam. It's the jam. Um, and like I said, they're, they seem to be pretty tough and the battery life on them is surprisingly good for everything that it does, you know. But. I'd say that deserves to be on the must have tools list. And I don't think enough people put it in that category. The other thing is when you're looking at these laser products, there's a lot of them coming out now. There's a lot of different brands. There's a lot of different types. There's a lot of different use cases for these products. Um, I think simple is always best unless you know what, why you need one of these upgraded fancy machines that does all this other crazy crap i'd save your money because what you're looking for at the end of the day is to shoot a dot on a wall and know how far away it is so that if 80 dollar one does that just fine and it's from a good brand um i have experienced that one i don't have experience with these uh lika or Leisha. I don't, I don't have any experience with that brand. I don't have any experience with these other brands. I don't know how reliable or what reputation they have is. Um, but like I said, I can recommend that $80 Bosch uh, Blaze Pro because um, I own one of these. Um, but as far as laser products go, there are a couple of other types of laser products that I think are really helpful that are kind of slept on. Um, one of them that I use in my industry a lot because we do rigging is a PLS laser. And these guys, oh my God, it's a fluke product. So you know it's good stuff. Um, 
but so what this is is a multi-plane uh plum level uh everything all in one so typically what i use these guys for is say i'm building a rig or i'm trying to hang something overhead or mount something overhead but i want it to land on a floor reference so somewhere on the actual ground that i'm on i'm trying to perfectly rig something on that point this will let me measure my point on the ground place the laser and shoot a gyroscopically stabilized laser so you know it's actually you know parallel or uh, perpendicular to gravity so it's perfectly aiming out straight up off of the earth's surface you set that on your measurement and it's going to go straight up to exactly whatever point it was you needed to shoot um this guy is uh just absolutely killer they're very tough too they have good battery life uh they're a little expensive but worth every penny man um there's also some of these this is this is really helpful for what i do but i know for some of these like interior design people cabinetry guys there's these other laser systems now where you have these laser levels that fill a whole room with references now i don't own one of these yet but uh i probably will soon Let's see a brand i reckon well here's the is that a Bosch or is that a knockoff? I think that might be a knockoff. Here's a Bosch. And these guys are looking like they're not too expensive. Here's a skill one. That looks pretty nice. So you can see this is a, a cross line laser level, horizontal and vertical lines. So the thing will shoot your whole room up with these reference lines. And it makes this really easy for hanging cabinets or artwork or whatever accent you're trying to put somewhere even just building a deck. I mean, these things are killer. Um, and while it doesn't replace some of the more advanced measuring stuff for stuff like what you're seeing here, like masking off a room, you know, hanging shelves, hanging cabinets, it's just absolutely great. And these things are getting cheap, man. I mean, you're, you're looking at 39 bucks for the laser itself. I mean, God, should we all just order these right now? Probably. <laughs> what a fantastic little tool, though, for the money. Um, I would say if you were going to buy any electronics other than your power tools, it would be one of these and one of the laser distometers. And that would be the most important thing. The PLS is a little more specific. But these two things would come in really handy almost on a daily basis if you do any type of construction work. Um, even even if you're you know into interior design or staging or something, I'm sure these would come in handy. But I also like to every once in a while, just as a fun little experiment, since we've covered we've covered some uh, some good basic tools, um, some stuff that I just like kind of wanted to plug, some stuff that I kind of wanted to give a shout out to, some stuff that really helps me make money and helps me get jobs done efficiently without having to carry too much gear or spread myself too thin financially with tools. These are all very, um, a lot of bang for your buck products, every single one of these that we've talked about. But when you talk about bang for your buck, you got to look at AliExpress, right? <laughs> if you go into the tools category and AliExpress, you know, sometimes I'm shocked. Sometimes there's a very useful items in here for not much money quality is going to be very questionable um but sometimes there's some good ideas and i'm sure some of these chinese manufacturers every once in a while strike oil with this stuff and they find that they came up with a with a good product and maybe somebody else will come around to making it better than whatever the manufacturer aliexpress has um but yeah, so I just like cruising this tool page as a fun little experiment. Uh, like for instance, he, right here, you have these auto door clip panel trim. These things will pop up those little interior rivets that hold your door cards and door panels and your like dash cover and all that kind of shit on. That's a great little tool set. I wouldn't buy it from AliExpress, but you see what I mean by just hitting the tool category here and clicking orders. You can kind of see what everyone's buying tool wise from AliExpress. 
And some of it makes sense. Here's some of your little uh, adapter drivers. Um, here's some of these telescopic uh, magnetic pickup tools. These things are great. This is uh, this is all Harbor Freight kind of stuff. Um, to be honest, I think it would be cheaper just to run down to Harbor Freight and buy these for a dollar on the Sunday parking lot sales. Um, but magnetic pickup tools, don't sleep on those either, man. Those are great. Magnetic pickup tools and telescoping mirrors, especially if you're a mechanic or you work in construction in confined spaces or dark spaces, those telescoping mirror tools are awesome, man. And I use them all the time. You got some clamps here that I'm sure will blow out on you almost immediately. Uh, is there anything cool in here? $39 for 1080p monocular night vision device at uh, i'm gonna go ahead and say that that doesn't work at all <laughs> judging by the fact that uh digital night vision sucks and analog night vision costs like 10 grand <laughs> this is kind of a joke as most stuff on alibaba is but you never know guys you might get lucky like like this look at this you got one of these wrist wrap as seen on tv freaking uh bit organizers that's just waiting to slice you open <laughs> this this is useless do not let anybody see you wearing that on the job site one thing i will say is some of these i i don't know if i would say you should trust them but some of these uh generic knockoff power tool batteries aren't half bad and they've lasted quite a long time i'm sure they're hit and miss um and i'm sure if you miss there is no chance at getting your money back <laughs> but uh uh sometimes you just need a seven dollar battery man and they work for that these guys how could i forget i think these were called the grip it or the gator bit or the grab it or something something like that um i bought dozens of these things they're awesome i will i will give them the credit they are an awesome design that is so useful for any little dinky thing you got going on but if you're bringing this to work, you're asking for trouble. Uh, quick little story on how how bad this can go for you. Um, I was using one of these to undo a uh, a seven sixteenths nut, which is not not big hardware on a, a a small pipe clamp. And this thing was impacted on so hard that my little quarter inch impact wasn't getting it off. So it was on there pretty good, but I was using this. And uh, the only reason I was using this was because since I was up high, I didn't bring my whole tool belt that has my actual sockets. I just have this one universal one in case I happen to need to get at a socket real quick. And I thought up until this point, I could trust this tool. But when I was trying to impact this nut off, this thing something broke one of the pins broke inside or one of the springs holding the pins broke inside and every one of those little needle pins came flying out of that socket and that wouldn't have been that big of a deal big whoop you broke up six seven eight dollar tool no problem except for the fact that it happened to me when i was 30 40 feet in the air and now there are needle pins dropping all over a sound stage uh creates kind of a dangerous situation it's also a big no-no when you're working at height to drop anything anything at all you don't know if everyone's wearing hard hats you don't know where one of those is going to bounce off to or what it's going to damage dropping things when you're working at height is a is a sin and it really really angered me that while i hadn't dropped anything there was no way for me to ensure nothing fell because of all these little needles just doing what they want to do once this thing blows open. Um, the outer barrel didn't crack. I'll give it that. I've never had the outer barrel crack on anything because it seems to just be uh, a 19 millimeter socket filled with pins. So I'm sure the socket itself is fine. But those pins, if you put an impact on those or you use too much pressure on those for any reason, they will explode and fall out and create a big mess. And you'll end up with another 19 millimeter generic socket um and a mess <laughs> but uh other than that i think it's a cool design 
I just wish it was executed a little better. It'd be really nice if somebody made a high quality version, one of these that was guaranteed. Um, I'd be able to get behind that. But as far as all this goes, I mean, like I said, I just wanted to chat real quick about some tools that I have a lot of respect for, that I have a lot of experience with, um, stuff that I wouldn't be able to live without and stuff that I would recommend all of you purchase regardless of what you do for a living. These are universally um, useful things, uh, just like having a good running vehicle or having um, you know, a computer. Uh, this stuff is going to change your life when you feel like you know how to use it, you know when to use it and uh and why you know that that this this stuff this is just a, a one of those universal things man where everybody should get some of these tools that i'm talking about and i'm just trying to guide you into what's worked for me and what's worked for the people around me but uh obviously uh we could do this all day long and uh this video is already uh pushing over an hour so i'm probably going to cut it off there um, I hope you guys really uh, got some some use out of this long rant of mine. I know I'm sure some of you fell asleep halfway through it and uh, um, didn't hear everything I had to say. And that's just fine because it's not that important. But what is important is you get some tools, you learn how to use them, you learn when to use them, and uh, you make yourself a more self-sufficient person. Um, anyway. I'll see you guys on the next one. And I hope that all of you have a fantastic, fantastic day.